Hello, today we're going to continue our notes on the invertebrates and we're going to focus in on the phylums of worms. There are over 20,000 different worm-like organisms. And just some generalities, all right? They all have bilateral symmetry. Um, their bodies are made of true tissues, organs, and organ systems. And we're going to focus on three phylums. Platyomenthes, which are the flatworms, nematodes, which are the roundworms, and annelids, which are the segmented worms. So, platyomenthes. These are the flatworms. There's about 20,000 different species. Okay, they are the simplest um, worms um, with the organs and organ systems. Um, their bodies are flattened. Okay, um, they do obviously have bilateral symmetry. They do not have a body cavity, so they don't have that internal cavity between their digestive tract and their body wall. Again, they have a very flat, thin body. There's really no spaces between the layers of the tissues in their bodies. No cell is ever far away, so oxygen can readily diffuse into the cell. The waste can get out, okay? Um, they typically are marine, freshwater, or live in damp terrestrial environments. They do have the three tissue layers, the ectoderm, or the outer layer, mesoderm is the middle layer, and endoderm is the innermost layer. All right. They do range in length from 1 millimeter to 20 meters. They do have a definite head, and you can see their movement is focused with their head first. So they do move actively through its environment. Okay. They do have the development of a brain, and they do have now two nerve cords. They still have one opening, which is the mouth, okay, and they still have that gastrovascular cavity. They are getting the intestine, um, which is going to be a chamber for digestion and transporting the products of digestion into every nook and cranny of that animal, allowing nutrients to diffuse all over the body cells. So they don't have respiratory systems or circulatory systems yet. Okay. Reproduction is asexual or sexual. So we have our hermaphrodites, both sperm and eggs. And then we have asexuals regeneration. And we can be parasitic or non-parasitic classes. So we will talk about a couple of classes. And again, there's um, 20,000 different species of these. So three classes we're going to talk about is turbularia, which is a non-parasitic, which is a planaria, which we will do a lab on. Another class is the trematodes, which are parasitic. And then the cestodes, or the tapeworms, which are also parasitic. So let's talk about the turbularia. Um, this is the planaria. There are about 3,000 different species. They are not parasitic. Um, they live in marine environments. Um, they live under rocks, on the bottom of lakes and oceans. They live in ponds, streams, and so forth. They are carnivores. Um, they do um, feed on dead animals, um, protists, or small animals. What's cool is their mouth is located in the middle of their body, and they will feed by extending their pharynx out of its mouth. So food is sucked in and passes into the gastrovascular cavity in that intestine, and then the nutrients are absor absorbed. All right. Excretion is through the mouth and the pharynx and these flame cells. Flame cells are cells that enclose cilia and surround the excretory ducts. So the beating cilia will move waste into the ducts and then out. So it's a very, very simple excretory apparatus. Um, it will help to maintain osmotic balance between the animal and the surrounding system. All right, so this is just showing. I do want to point out that it does have two eye spots that are light sensitive. They do resemble eyes, but they only sense light and dark. Okay, and this is kind of like the, the evolution of a central nervous system. These um, arrow-like projections, this is called the auricles. Um, these are projections at the side of the worm's head that contain many cells that are sensitive to touch and water currents. And it does function for smell. Okay. And we'll watch these videos in class. All right, the trematodes are the flukes. There's about 6,000 different species, and they are parasitic. Um, they do live on or in other animals. <coughs> they can live as adults in the intestines of their vertebrate hosts. Um, their life cycle does contain two different hosts. One is a snail and one is a vertebrate. Okay, um, they do have what's called a cuticle, which is a tough material that surrounds the flute, and that's going to protect the flute from the digestive enzymes of the host. All right, it's a thick, non-living coating. All right, 
Um, the flukes often have suckers for attaching to the internal organs of the host. Um, they are hermaphrodites. Um, they do have a uterus to store eggs. Um, reproductive organs fill the interior of a mature fluke. And definitely cross-fertilization cross is the rule. It does have two sucker mouths. So it has one anterior and one ventral. Um, and it has a powerful pharynx that sucks in blood, cells, and fluids. Um, pretty much 200 million people around the world will suffer from blood flukes. Um, they suffer from body pains, anemia, dysentery. Um, and they become infected by the blood fluke by wading in water that contains the larva. The larva will then penetrate the skin and eventually settle as male and female pairs in the blood vessels. Um, they will release thousands of fertilized eggs which clog the blood vessels, interferes with blood flow, destroys tissue, causing awful infections. And we'll watch this in class also. All right, the last class we'll talk about on flatworms is cestoda, the tapeworms. There's about 1,500 species. Again, these are parasitic, um, and adults live mostly in vertebrates like us. Um, they are very ribbon-like, which helps to increase the surface area for absorption. Now, the body is divided into many sections called proglottids. That allows the tapeworm to grow in size, and it's loaded with thousands of eggs. They're like sacks of sex organs. Um, the eggs are released from the posterior end of the worm and leave the body with the feces. Now, they don't have a digestive system. They live in the intestine of the host. So the food is already digested and absorbed directly from the host to its cells. Okay? Um, it does have a structure called the scolax that has hooks, hooks and suckers that will allow them to attach. Um, it, it locks the worm to the intestinal lining of the host. All right? Um, sexual reproduction is with hermaphrodites and again, um, self-fertilization is possible, but it is mostly cross-fertilization. Okay, um, and pretty much the largest tapeworm ever found was 75 feet long. Um, humans get this from eating undercooked meat contaminated with the cysts, and that can cause intestinal blockage and can rob nutrients from the human host to cause um, nutritional deficiencies. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the roundworms or phylum nematoda. There's about 10,000 to 80,000 different species. Um, and really, they're so numerous, about 10 times that number actually exists. They're really the most numerous type of animal. Um, 90,000 roundworms of a different species were found in one rounding, rotting apple. So that's quite incredible. Okay, they do have a round tube like body that has like a tapered end. Um, they're very small, but they can be bigger, okay? They could go to more than seven meters. Um, there was actually um, a parasite on a whale that grew to almost nine meters, okay? Um, they do live everywhere in the soil, water, within animals, tissues of plants, okay? In the soil, they do decompose organic a matter, and they do play a huge role in decomposition. Now, they're pseudocoelomates, so we have an online cavity that we'll eventually, we'll see next thing is going to develop into the coelomate. So, the pseudocoelomate is going to have that hydroscotic skeleton component to help with movement. The fluid through the substances can diffuse from one part of the body to another, okay? Now, this is huge. Please start this, circle this, whatever. They have a one-way digestive tract. This is a complete digestive tract. So they have the formation of an anus. They have a mouth and an anus. So the food will enter the mouth, waste will exit the anus. This is the first presence of an anus, okay? This is huge, all right? Now, the body is covered by a tough but transparent cuticle, okay? And they will have to shed that when they grow. Um, now, as far as this um, to happen, the muscles allow it to move, and they are longitudinal. Okay, and we will get to see them moving as we look at a roundworm in soil. Reproduction. Males and females are separate individuals, so they do go through sexual reproduction. Females are generally larger than the males, and fertilization is internal. We have some examples. We have Ascaris, we have hookworm, and trichinella. Ascaris affects over um, 700 million people in the world. It lives in the small intestines. It can grow to be about 40 centimeters long, 
and it pretty much occurs when you swallow the eggs in food or water that has been um, contaminated. Hookworms enter um, as larvae through the skin of the feet and they're about 10 millimeters long and they will anchor themselves to a person's intestinal tract and rasp an open sore which allows them to feed on the blood. Trichinella is contracted by eating undercooked pork. Um, you eat it as a larva, the larva mature, they reside in the small intestine for about a month. They produce young that bore through the intestinal wall, they do enter the circulatory system and then they go into the muscular system which causes extreme pain. Um, and just a little fun fact, Ascaris can produce 200,000 eggs per day and live in a human for 25 years. And we'll watch those videos in class. And that's what we'll see when we do the lab. Hookworm goes into the feet. All right, our last phylum we're going to talk about are the annelids. These are the segmented worms. Um, the segmentation allows for greater flexibility and mobility. Now their size can be from one mil millimeter to three meters in length. Um, and there was a, the three meter one was a giant Australian earthworm. Um, they can live in freshwater, the ocean, damp soil. We have a body cavity now, which is that fluid filled body cavity surrounded by the mesoderm. Um, it provides room in the body for its organs. Um, the annelid is partitioned with the segments by septa and we'll see that as we dissect it. Okay, there's about 15,000 different annelid species um, and annelids kind of mean like little rings because they are se um, segregated. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to talk about peritoneum. Peritoneum is a membrane that originates from the inner mesoderm, which is gonna provide support. It also holds the internal organs in place in the sela. Segmentation is huge because it is the division of the body into sections. Um, it can increase the size of an animal by adding on new segments. Different segments can adapt to carry out special functions. It does increase flexibility, allowing different parts of the body to bend independently of others. And earthworms or annelids can have like 100 segments. Setae are external bristles. They act as anchors to prevent backward slippage as the worm pushes its advancing head through the soil. Now the muscles are circular and longitudinal. Um, and again, they're going to push those muscles and anchor with the setae to help them move. Um, they're also going to use the fluid pressure within the coelom and that hydrostatic skeleton help push forward. Okay. Um, the circular muscles will contract. The segments become thinner and elongate. And then when you contract the longitudinal muscles, that causes the segment to shorten and thicken. Um, so that will allow the worm to probe forward to alternate contractions of circular and longitudinal muscles. Okay, um, they do have a closed circulatory system. They have two main vessels. They have a dorsal and a ventral blood vessel. Um, they do have aortic arches, which are the hearts. They have five pairs. Respiration is now through diffusion. Um, it only occurs if the skin is moist. So mucus is secreted by the worm to maintain a film of moisture all over the earthworm. And oxygen from the water in the soil dissolves in the film, diffuses, and then enters the capillaries. Nervous system, we have brain, ventral nerve cord, clusters of nerve cells in each cell. And then they are hermaphrodites. Um, they mate and cross-fertilize by exchanging sperm. And they have what's called the clitellum, which secretes a cocoon made of mucus that slides along, picking up eggs and receives sperm. This is showing you the earthworm. Um, the largest earthworm ever found was 22 feet long. We'll watch that later. Okay? So if you guys have any questions, let me know. But we're going to be doing a lots of labs on these worms. And you're going to be seeing um, the first dissection with the earthworm. All right. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.